Good morning everybody. Madunggan na ko ninyo. Klaro na kong tingog. Yes. Yes. So, I am Ma'am Bell. I will be sub substituting for Ma'am Nor for today. Kay na siya, nagbiyahe siya. So, I hope maminaw gyapon ko maminaw gyapon mo mas kindili si Ma'am Nor ang inyo, ang inyong ang ting discuss niya today. So, before we start, can anybody lead the prayer? Or mamili na lang ko um Fritzel, can you please lead the prayer? Yes, ma'am. Peace out. Let us all remember that you are in the most holy presence of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our most gracious and loving Father, we praise you and glorify your name for you are our God, the creator of everything. As we start our day, help us show the best that we can and make a show and make our teachers channel of our learnings. This is all I ask, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Okay, thank you. So, good morning everybody. We will, not, uh, we will now start our lesson. But before we start, I will let you see a picture. This one. What do you think? Unsan is na type of water ang naa sa baso? What do you think is it? Fresh water or salt water? Fresh water. Fresh water. Mm -mm, very good. So, this one is a fresh water. Um, the water inside the glass is fresh water. Then, if one day, mawala atong source of fresh water, like kaning water na nasa baso, what do you think will happen? Anybody? What do you think will happen if once nga mag-deplete na atong source aning fresh water? What do you think will happen? Anybody? Wala? Haman, manawag ko? Hmm, manawag na lang ako. Okay, wala ka to bag. Mayra? Mayra, say ya? Yes, ma'am. Kung ma'am, if mag-deplete ang fresh water, uh, gamay na lang atong mainom na tubig. So, mas scars na ang fresh water. Dayon, Base na ay mga na ay mag emerge ng mga companies na mag convert o kanang from salt water to fresh water mag like managan guru na sila mm -mm. but actually if one fresh water our fresh water source would be depleted um it wouldn't take long for the common water supply to become unsanitary under these conditions. Then, pollute, the polluted water supply would kill aquatic life, further reducing the available food supply. Fresh water is very important to us, kay fresh water is used to sanitize for replen replenishing energy, diba? So, what so before not before tamo about ana na point, let's talk about kung asa gikan ang kanang fresh water. So our topic for today is all about surface water. So before before tamo about ato na yung water na part, we will talk first about the hydrologic cycle. Diba familiar naman sa ana hydrologic cycle? Naka, Nakalesan na ba mo, Ani? Or nakadungog lang mo? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm. 
di ba, familiar na tana ka nang sa mga terms niya, pero let us talk again about it, kaya ba, sinakalimot na mo sa uban nga terms. So, the first one is evaporation. The next one is transpiration. Next, or as we call it as evo evapotranspiration, meaning it is the sum of evaporation from the land surface plus transpiration from plants. The typical plant, including any found in a landscape, absorbs water from soil through its root. That water is then used for metabolic and physiologic functions. The next one, any evapotranspiration? Evapotranspiration is ang condensation. Next one is precipitation. And the last one is infiltration and runoff. So next slide, we will talk about the full hydrologic cycle. The hydrologic, cy hydrologic cycle begins with the evaporation of water from the surface of the ocean. As moist air is lifted, it cools and water vapor condenses from the cloud. Moisture is transported around the globe until it returns to the surface as precipitation. Once the water reaches the ground, one of two processes may occur. Number one is some of the water may evaporate back to the atmosphere or two, the water may penetrate the surface and become groundwater. Groundwater either seeps its way back in its way into the oceans, rivers and streams or is released back into the atmosphere through transpiration. The balance of water that remains on Earth's surface is run off, which empties into lakes, rivers, and streams, and is carried back to the oceans where the cycle begins. So, as you can see sa photo, water from oceans evaporates. Nag-evaporate siya. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Once it evaporates, pag super saturated na ang clouds, mo precipitate na po siya. Once that water mo abot sa sayuta, it either evaporate again or mo seep through siya sa yuta. That is what happens during the hydrologic cycle. So the total global water it uh, fresh water only covers 2.5% of the to total na surface area. Diba, imagine 2.5% lang ang gina cover sa fresh water and sal saline lakes and groundwater 1%. Oceans is 96.5%. So what if mawala ni 2.5%? Walay water na i-absorb ang plants nun, so magamay ang food supply. G-divide na sa niya o ikatulo. Number one is canning surface water and other fresh water, 1.3%. Grand water, 30.1%. And glaciers and ice sheet, 68.6%. So, so, surface water and other fresh water, mao ni sila ang division. So, atmosphere, 0.22%. Biological water, 0.22%. Rivers, 0.46%. Swamps, 2.53%. Soil moisture, 3.52%. Lakes, 20.1%. And snow and ice, 73.1%. So, 
So, surface water is any body of water above ground, including streams, rivers, lakes, wetlands, reservoirs, and creeks. The ocean, despite being salt water, is also considered surface water. Surface water participates in the hydrologic cycle, or what we call as water cycle which involves the movement of water to and from the Earth's surface. Precipitation and water runoff feed bodies of surface water, evaporation and seepage of water into the ground, and on the other hand, cause water bodies to lose water. Water that sinks deep into the ground is called ground water. So, let us talk about drainage basins. It is the land area that contributes to a river system. So the drainage basin of one stream is separated from the drainage basin of another by an imaginary line called a divide. As you can see, it's a GIF. So, maoni siya ang drainage basin. So, rivers, zones, and systems. So, there, is, there are three zones. The first zone is the zone of sediment production or collecting system. Sending collecting system consists of network of tributaries in the headwater, meaning the higher portions of the river, which collects and funnels water and sediment to the mainstream. It commonly has a dendritic or tree-like drainage pattern with numerous branches that extend upslope towards the divide. Monisha. So, the next zone is the transporting system. The transporting system is the main trunk stream which functions as a channel way through which water and sediments move from the collecting area toward the ocean. It may also collect additional water and sediments. Deposition may occur as it meanders or when it overflows during the flood. So, from the lake transporting system or zone of transportation, dire na part is mao na apart nga mag transport sa water and sediments through another channel na pod. Then the last one is the zone of dis deposition or the dispersing system. It consists of a network of distributaries or stream branches into which a river divides where it reaches the delta. At the mouth of a river where sediments and water are dispersed into an ocean, a lake, or dry basin. The major process is deposition. From the word, from the name na zone of deposition. So, ang major nga kay Tabo Diha is ang deposition. Monisha. Headwaters, or what we call as canning collecting system, another term po na siya, diri magsugod ang tanan. Diri mag-collect, diri mabutang ang water dahil mumove siya to the lower elevation nga transfer zone. Diri na mukuha siya of different sediments para i-move to the depositional zone or Kung asa i, um, aha i distribute ang katong mga water or sediments or minerals na gikan sa ibabaw, padulong sa ubos. So, when a stream system develops freely on a homogeneous surface, the following general relationships develop. Number one, the number of tributaries decrease downstream in a mathematical progression. 
Number two, the tributaries progressively become longer downstream. Number three, the gradient of tributaries decrease exponentially downstream. Number four, the stream channels become progressively deeper and wider downstream. And number five, the size of the valley is proportional to the size of the stream and increases downstream. These relationships evidence that stream erodes the valleys through which they flow. As you can see sa photo, di ba sa ibabaw, daghan pa sa sanga-sanga, once it reaches down here, gamay na lang ang gamay ang murag sanga niya. But as, kung tanaw ni mo sa sulod, sa, siya, sa sulod is very deep na siya. So drainage patterns. The first one is kaning dendritic. So before we ta we talk good on sa ang drainage patterns, geomorphologists and hydrologists often view streams as part of drainage basins. A drainage basin is a topographic region from which a stream receives runoff through through flow and groundwater flow. So, ang una nga drainage pattern is ang dendritic. So, sa so makita ninyo sa picture, what do you think? Kung sa inyong ma-observe? Anybody? Or branches of tree. Oo, very good. So, ang dendritic is mura siya na a branch sa tree. Mura siya gasanga. That is what dendritic pattern is. So, dendritic patterns are which by far the most common de to develop in areas where the rock or unconsolidated materials beneath the stream has no particular fabric or structure that can be eroded equally easily in all directions. Examples would be the granite, nice and volca volcanic rock and sedimentary rock that has not been folded. The next one is the radial. As you can see, the streams radiate outwards from the central high point. Volcanoes usually display excellent radial drainage. Other geological features on which radial drainage commonly develops are domes with lacolis. On these features, the drainage may exhibit a combination of radial patterns. As you can see, na asay midpoint. Na asay midpoint dere. Dayon pa outwards ang paggawas. Dili uh, it's unlike the drainage nga. Mura siya gasangasanga nga flat. Kani siya is na asay elevation. Mao na ang medial nga drainage. The next one is rectangular. So rectangular patterns develop in areas that have very little topography and a system of bedding planes, fractures, or faults that form a triangular network. Oo, na asay sangasanga pero... Unlike sa dendritic nga ang sanga na pailain sanga, mura sa hmm, mura sa uniform ang linya sa pagka crack or sa drainages compared sa radial of sa dendritic. And the last one, kaning chalice. So, Trellis drainage patterns typically develop where sedimentary rocks have been folded or tilted then eroded to varying degrees depending on the strength. So, maoni siya. You can see their cracks na very kanang wala siya specific na direction. Kibali, pwede siya mo crack sa solo, pwede siya mo crack sa gawas. So, maani sa other picture gyapon sa kanang drainage patterns. As you can see, sa radial, di ba, na asay murag midpoint. 
you can see, canincellis, rectangular and the dendritic pattern. So, so let's talk about the stream flow. There are two types of stream flow. The one is the laminar flow and the turbulent flow. Klaro na kayo sa picture ang yun ang difference, di ba? Sa laminar flow is water flows in a parallel sheet. Riverbed is even and less erosion. Kaya ang flow sa laminar is one way lang. Kibalik, ang dagan sa tanganan is forward. Dili na magbalik, mag-atras-atras nga na daghan pa dami just mabuhat ko. Unlike sa kaning turbulent flow nga, water flow, turbulence, and riverbed is uneven, then there is more erosion. So there are factor, factors affecting flow velocity. Number one is the gradient. Gradient is the slope of the sheen channel. The gradient is the steepest in the headwaters and decreases down slope. The longitudinal profile or a cross section of a stream from its headwaters to its mouth is a smooth concave upward curve that becomes very flat at the lower end of the stream. Same as Kaneo. Same as what the picture shows. So it is usually expressed as the number of meters the stream descends for each kilometer of flow. Mauna siya ang gradient. Di ba, from dire kay medyo hinahinay pa, if paubos kayo, makusog na da yun. Kaya ang sloping niya, due to the sloping of the area. The next one is, the name, channel shape, size, and roughness. So, a straight channel is a conduit that guides the flow of water, but the water encounters friction at it. As it flows, the shape, size, and roughness of the channel affects the amount of friction. The next one is discharge. Discharge is the size of a stream channel that is largely determined by the amount of water supplied from the drainage basin. The measure most often used to compare the sizes of streams is discharge meaning the volume of water flowing past a certain point in a given unit of time. <coughs> so, the next one, the next topic is all about longitudinal profile. One usual way of studying a stream is examine its longitudinal profile. Such a profile is simply a cross-sectional view of a stream from its source area called the head or headwaters to its mouth. The point downstream where it empties into another water body, such as a river, lake, or an ocean. That is longitudinal profile. Kaning murag yang measurement gikan sa ulo, padulo, sa mouth. Which is the greater end sa stream profile. Next one is stream erosion. Di ba we talk about kaning erosion, ay, pa naman weathering and erosion, nana? So, a stream's ability to accumulate and transport soil and weather drops is aided by the work of raindrops which knock sediment particles loose. Streams are one of the most effective surface agents that erode rocks and sediments. Erosional, erosional landscapes such as Grand Canyon have been formed by a constant erosion from running water over millions of years. In addition to eroding the bedrock and previously deposited sediments along its route, a stream constantly abrades the weathers and weathers the individual rock and soil particles carried by its water. As you can see, the back that is a first photo. Medyo kon pa sa kanang gamay ang area din daghan ang bato-bato. But as you can see sa second picture is 
na i na weather na siya so daghan ng free space for water to flow that is why as you can see here lalom lalom na ang water area compared sa kaning dire sa first photo so we'll talk about next is transportation of sediments <coughs> So, the first one is the dissolved load. It is the matter transported in a form of chemical ions and essentially invisible. The next one is suspended load. The largest fraction of material moved by a river, mostly consisting of silt and clay or particles that remain in suspension most of the time and move downward at a velocity of flowing water. And the last one is canning the bed, bed load. Bed load is the particles of sediments too large to remain in suspension that they collect in stream on the bottom. So, maami sa ang picture sa dissolved load. Suspended load and the bed load. So, the most abundant materials there is a dissolved load are calcium, by and bicarbonate ions but this also includes sodium magnesium chloride ferric and sulfate ions organic acids are also present there is a ibabaw na there is a suspended load silt and clay particles then sa bed load is mo na sa mga salin salin these are mo kaning mga butang makita ninyo sa bed load is kaning particles that move by sliding, rolling, and saltation or transportation of particles by wind or water through a series of bouncing movements. As you can see sa kaning murag black, mao na ang ginasignify sa bouncing movements. The bed load moves only when there is sufficient velocity to move the large particles. So the speed's ability to carry solid particles is described using two criteria. The capacity and its competence. Whenever a stream is slows down, its velocity decreases. Its competence is reduced and sediment begins to drop out. The largest particles is the first one. So, let's talk about the capacity. Capacity means the maximum load of solid particles a stream can transport per unit of time. The next one is competence. It is a measure of a stream's ability to transport particles based on size rather than quantity. So, maani siya. As you can see, Kaning white nga arrows signifies fine or coarse sediment. The black is kaning fine sediments, and kaning yellow is the coarse sediments. So there is an equilibrium in river systems. A steam profile at equilibrium is graded a graded stream. Velocity, load, gradient, and volume of water are in balance. No erosion nor deposition takes place. Kibali, wala lai na hitabo. As is sala siya. So, there, this is what we call a graded stream. Next one is, faulting disrupts equilibrium by decreasing the gradient downstream and increasing the gradient and stream velocity at the fault line. Mauni sa inyo makita sa picture na ay fault, waterfall, or fault line. Mura sa waterfall tanawon. So, erosion proceeds upstream from the fault and deposition occurs downstream. Mauni siya. Deposition occurs here. Dere, dere. So, erosion and deposition continue to develop a new shape profile at which the velocity, load, gradient, and volume of water will be in 
Alan, so that neither erosion nor deposition of course money siya. so a new profile of equilibrium is eventually re-established eh hara ninyo maingon nga graded nga stream na siya if kwa na siya wala na erosion or deposition mahitabo as is na tanan money siya. So, stream deposition. Deposition occurs whenever a stream flows, causing a reduction in competence. Put another way, particles are deposited when flow velocity is less than the settling velocity. As the stream's flow velocity decreases, sediments begin to settle the largest particles first. So, money siya sa gikan sa small nga movement of water diri sa first level, mabot siya sa rapids. Rapids meaning ka na morning pinaka kusog na part. Then, mabot siya sa lake where it, pan, where it, diri siya magtipok na na. Once the, it's, if puno na ang lake, it moves to the falls. Then once it moves again, padulong na sa sa C. So these are the processes of stream deposition. One is flood plain, meanders and point bars, natural leaves, box swamp, braided streams, alluvial valleys, and delta. So the first one is the flood plain. Flood plain is a flat, occasionally flooded area bordering a stream. It is usually covered with large quantities of sediment and certain features are developed. Monisha. Flood plain, once it removes, once uh, it is flooded, move ang mga sediment. So, naanay, mahitabo nga bago nga flood plain. Monisha. So, the next one is the meanders or the point bars. So, meanders are broad, looping bends in river. Maunis siya. Bend sa river. As you can see, na yung gamay nga is. Kanisa ay very curved na meanders. Then, kanisa na ay separate. Na ay separation pero curve ya po siya. So, this a point bar is a depositional feature made of alluvium that accumulates on the side inside bend of streams and rivers below the slip of slope. Point bars are found in abundance in mature or meandering streams. They are crescent shaped and located on the inside of stream bend, being very similar, though often smaller than tow heads or River Islands. So, maunin yung makita, point bar. Cut back, point bar. Then, ang, diba, ang meanders is a katong curve. Maunin siya ang meanders. So, ang meanders in general is a bend in water course of river. A meanders forms when moving water in a stream erodes the outbanks and widens its valley its valleys and the inner part of the river has less energy and deposits silt. A point bar is deposited where the water on the inside of a meander flows. And the cutback is the zone of active erosion. As you can see here, Maogini siya ang actual picture. Here is the point bar Muralashag for Sad nga natipok radire. It is deposited where the water on the inside of the meander slows down. Medyo ni hina yaman sa tungod sa korbada. Once it moves from the point bar to the next part sa curve, here is the cutbank. Dili magtipok ang mga na-erode na particles. Then move na sad siya next to another point bar where Dere na sad nag-slow down ang movement of water and sediments. 
So the next one is the natural leaves. It is a broad, low embankment built up along the banks of river channels during floods. Flooding significantly reduces stream velocity, causing the deposition of some suspended elements. Mm. As you can see, diba, uh, before flood, okay, water lang siya. During the flood, there is movement of sediment sa edges. Pero dili pa kayo inana ka baga. Then, once nga ikapila na sa baha o na po balik, mo built up ang kanin murag wall or as you call as natural leaves. Mo ni siya ang Examples for a natural leaves canning my nanny. So next one is the back swamp. The marshy area of a flood plain at some distance beyond and lower than the natural leaves that can find the river. It is swampy because it is poorly drained. Tributary streams in the back of swamp are unable to flow upslope the natural leaves. So they are forced to empty into back swamp or to flow as yellow streams, which flows parallel to the main stream for a considerable distance before joining it. Tungo dani natural leaves na makita ninyo diri, ang tubig from the back swamp, dili makaadto sa what as an area of water. So, mag-flow lang sa dire, dayon, mangita, mag-flow ang water hantod na na dayon, murag entrance nga, may, kwa na minus na ang natural leave. Next one is the braided system. Ay, a braided stream. <coughs> It is a stream with a complex of diverging and converging channels separated by bars or islands. They form where more sediment is available that can be removed by the discharge of the ship. As you can see, diba, kay mura siya salapid, braided, salapid kay daghan kay sa connections, but daghan po sa o ka ng movements like this from here na pwede siya move branch of the picas, pero sa mo branch of the rin, then another branch na po yung padulungan. The next one is the alluvial valleys. Stream may fill part of their valleys with sediments and then cut through the sediment fill, creating alluvial valleys. This is accompanied by the formation of stream terraces. One most famous type of alluvial valley is kani Mississippi Alluvial Valley. So these are these are the certain types of stream depositions, katong alluvial naturalis, the back swamp, the point bar, the cut off, the meander scar, the meandering graded or graded stream. Then uh, as na mo na siya. So, let's talk about the development of stream terraces. So, a stream cuts a valley by normal down cutting and headward erosion process. Changes in climate, base level, denudation, or other factors that reduce flow energy cause the stream to partially fill its valley with sediments forming a broad flat floor. Because of the movement sa sediments, mauni siya, mahita mo. Murag mo, flatten siya. Pero there is still water. So, an increase in flow energy causes the stream to erode through the previously, previously deposit alluvium. Mauni siya, as you can see. Then, the stream shifts laterally and forms lower terraces As subsequent changes cause it to erode, though the older through the older valley field, di ba muro na sa naglayer layer due to the erosion. Muro muro na sa nahimo. That is what we call as 
stream terraces. So, a delta is a large, roughly triangular body of sediment deposited at a mouth of the river. As a river enters a lake or ocean, its velocity suddenly diminished and most of its sediment flowed is deposited to from the delta. There are two major processes that are fundamental to the formation of a delta. Number one is the splitting of a stream into a distributary channel system which extends into open water in a branching pattern. Next is the development of local breaks called crevasses in natural leaves through which sediment is diverted and deposited as placed in the area between the distributaries. Maunisha. Splitting of a stream into a distributary channel, Maunisha. Bayon, crevasses, you can see it here. So there are stages of a stream. So, there are four types of use. <coughs> Number one is canning rapid flow, meaning the maturity there is maturity where the slope decreases, and when it reaches its old age, the flood plains widens. So next one is canning. There is poor drainage sa kanang bago pa na buhat ang stream. The stream begins to meander, moving side to side during maturity, and when it reaches the old age, the meanders can be cut off or filled. The next one is down cutting or erosion is greater than side cutting. When it reaches its maturity, side, side cutting becomes greater than down cutting. Then when it reaches the old age, water flows water flow slows down and carrying power decreases. And the last one is when water is moving down, eroding the bottom, river is moving straight, carving a V shaped valley. So when it reaches maturity it forms flood plains. So, maunis sa ang picture sa stages sa development sa stream. Diba? As you can see, kaya napa siya yung mga formation sa kilid-kilid. Then, when it reaches its maturity, kaya medyo ga-erode nga, ga-erode na siya. Then, when it reaches its old, uh, old age, flood plains develop alongside sa body of water. So, do you know, although water is abundant, more than 99% is unavailable for human to use, and a mere 0.3% is only usable? So, usable meaning pwede na to makonsume na water, 0.3% only. The, nine, the, rest of, the rest of the 99% is Unavailable kay either ice pa siya or salt water. So that's the end of our discussions. Na may pangotana or clarifications. Anybody? Wala na? Wala na. Come on. So, if wala na may question, class dismissed.